Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. Navy employs high-speed specialized boats for critical, rapid response missions on the water. These craft are primarily used to insert and extract Navy SEALs and other special operations forces during maritime operations. Missions include direct action raids, reconnaissance, interdiction of enemy vessels, and combat search and rescue. To succeed in such high-risk environments, boat teams must be proficient in handling advanced boats and weapon systems while operating under extreme physical and mental pressure. Their ability to work as a cohesive unit under demanding conditions is essential to mission success. To support the evolution of naval capabilities, the United States developed the M-80 Stiletto, a revolutionary testbed ship created for the Pentagon's Office of Force Transformation. This stealthy, high-speed vessel features advanced command and control systems tailored for riverine and littoral environments. The M-80 Stiletto was designed to shift reliance away from large, vulnerable capital ships, favoring smaller, more agile platforms equipped with cutting-edge technologies. Its innovative design allows for greater flexibility and survivability in modern maritime operations, reflecting the Navy's strategic shift toward more dynamic and cost-effective force projection. The M-80 Stiletto is a twin-M hull vessel with a distinctive shape that provides an exceptionally stable and high-speed platform, ideal for mounting advanced electronic surveillance systems, weaponry, or supporting special operations missions. Measuring 88 feet in length with a 40-foot beam, the vessel offers a spacious, rectangular deck layout optimized for mission flexibility. Internally, the Stiletto is more than a fast boat. It functions as a stealthy networked command center, part mothership, part high-speed tactical hub, The M80 Stiletto features a 2,000 square foot reconfigurable payload bay, allowing it to adapt seamlessly to a wide range of missions. While it is capable of supporting coastal patrol, riverine operations, and maritime interdiction, the Stiletto is most commonly employed for Seaborne Special Operations Forces SOF insertion missions. To support this role, it is equipped with an 11-meter rigid hull inflatable boat RHIP capable of carrying a 12-man Navy SEAL team along with four Silver Fox unmanned aerial vehicles. By transporting SOF teams closer to their objectives, the Stiletto significantly reduces transit time on RHIBs, increasing operational efficiency and preserving team readiness. As the vessel approaches the target zone, its onboard UAVs are launched to conduct forward reconnaissance, providing live intelligence on terrain, threats, and target movements.
Aboard the Stiletto, port and starboard mission planning areas enable operators to review real-time UAV data and refine their infiltration plans. At the final staging point, the Stiletto deploys the SOF team within just a few miles of the objective. Maintaining overwatch and data relay throughout the mission. Once the operation concludes, the vessel recovers the team and their RHIB. How do we effectively guard our shores and ensure maritime safety? The answer might lie with patrol boats. These small, agile vessels are key coastal defense and border security players. But among them, one stands out, the Mark VI patrol boat. The Mark VI was introduced to the U.S. Navy in 2015 to patrol rivers and coastal waters. It's replaced older, less capable boats and deployed in crucial areas like Bahrain and Guam. But can it make a difference in keeping our waters safe? Let's examine what makes the Mark VI patrol boat a key player in maritime security. The Mark VI spans 84.8 feet, making it significantly longer than earlier Navy patrol boats. It accommodates a crew of 10 sailors and carries up to eight additional personnel. Inside, the boat is designed for comfort and practicality, featuring spacious berths, shock-absorbing seats, and sound-deadening spaces that help reduce crew fatigue and the risk of injury in rough sea conditions. Equipped with a sophisticated C4 SI suite, the Mark VI boasts enhanced situational awareness and multi-mission support with flat screen monitors throughout. This networked system supports various missions from mine hunting to countering swarm boat attacks. The standard armament includes two remote-controlled Mark 38 Mod 2 25mm chain guns and six crewed M250 caliber machine guns, with options to mount M240 machine guns, M134 miniguns, and Mark 19 grenade launchers. It also features the Mark 50 gun weapon system, allowing operators to remotely control the armament from below deck. To keep the crew ready for action, they go through regular training exercises. These drills are crucial because they prepare the crew for all sorts of missions the Mark VI might face. Fire, fire! Whether it's finding mines, fending off swarm attacks, or performing rescue operations, these exercises make sure the crew knows what to do when the time comes. The Mark VI's aluminum hull is powered by two MTU-16V2000 M94 diesel engines connected to water jets, enabling speeds over 35 knots and a range of up to 600 nautical miles.
Its reconfigurable main aft cabin can house Navy SEALs or serve as a medical facility. The rear deck and stern are designed for launching and recovering small boats, UAVs, and UVs. The Mark VI is a solid replacement for the old Riverend command boat. The RCB was great in its time, with a crew of four to eight and the ability to transport up to 15 people. It had several mounts for different weapons and a remote operated small arms mount, which let sailors operate the gun safely from inside the boat. This was especially useful in rough seas, making missions safer and more accurate. The RCB's armored cockpit protected the crew and engine from small arms fire and explosion fragments, a crucial feature during operations. Serving in the coastal riverine force, the RCB acted as a link between shallow water units and larger naval vessels. This force, comprised of active and reserve members, operated more than 100 boats, ranging from 25-foot patrol boats to the new 85-foot Mark VI. With a length of 53 feet, a beam of 12 feet, and a draft of 36 inches, the RCB could cruise at over 35 knots and sprint at over 40 knots, with a range of more than 250 nautical miles. Its armament included mounts for M250 caliber, 7.62 mm M240 Bravo, Mark 1940mm machine guns, or Mark 44G, a U17 7.6, 2mm guns, and it had a foundation for a remote operated weapon system. Despite its strengths, the Mark VI brings advanced features and capabilities that make it a fitting successor. Its design and technology offer improvements in speed, range, and versatility, addressing the modern needs of maritime security. There can be times when even these small patrol craft are just too large for the mission at hand. Small boats are sometimes needed to conduct clandestine movement of forces to hostile beaches. These small, flexible, and easily deployable boats are frequently used by Navy SEALs and other special operations forces for covert operations, including reconnaissance, direct action, and personnel recovery as their low profile makes them ideal for stealth missions. Also known as Zodiac boats or combat rubber raiding craft, CRRCs are generally lightweight, inflatable boats. Depending on the mission, these boats are prized for their versatility and can accommodate between six and eight fully equipped soldiers.
However, for short distances and in emergency situations, they can carry more. The size of CRRCs can vary, but those most often used by the U.S. military typically measure around 15 to 17 feet. The size ensures a good balance between carrying capacity and the ability to remain low profile and maneuverable. From advanced stealth vessels like the M-80 Stiletto to versatile patrol boats such as the Mark VI, the U.S. military employs a wide range of small craft to dominate the littoral battle space. These platforms provide unmatched flexibility, speed, and tactical advantage, enabling forces to respond rapidly to emerging threats conduct covert operations, and protect vital interests across coastal and riverine environments. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.